Another powerful feature that ships with Node.js is the event emitter. The event emitter is Node.js's implementation of the PubSub design pattern, and it allows us to create listeners for and emit custom events. In fact, every time we've used that on function to listen for an event, we've already been using an implementation of the event emitter. Let's go to our files. You will find an empty JavaScript file titled benfranklin.js. Go ahead and open up that file in Sublime. The event emitter is a part of the events module. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable for events, and I will require the events module. Now the event emitter itself is a constructor, so I'm gonna create a new instance of a variable called emitter. So we'll create a new instance of the emitter by using the new keyword with the events module dot event emitter. There is the function that we want to use. So the event emitter is a constructor, and we're going to create a new instance of the event emitter. Now, this object that we created here on line three has on and emit. So every time we use on, we can wire up a custom event. You can name an event whatever you like. In this case, I've just called this custom event. The second argument that the on function takes is a callback function that will be invoked when the custom event is raised. In this case, our custom event is gonna pass a message and a status to this function as arguments. So when our custom event occurs, this callback function will be invoked asynchronously. Let's just go ahead and log the status in the message using template strings. So I'm gonna use those backtick characters and we'll go ahead and grab the status. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the value of the message to this template string. There we go. So when a custom event is raised, we'll pass a message and a status to this callback function asynchronously, and we're just going to log that message and status. The next part of the event emitter is the ability to trigger or emit custom events. We can trigger or emit a custom event with the emit function. So emitter.emit will fire our custom event. The first argument is the event name that we want to fire. And then the next arguments are going to be the arguments that will be passed to the callback function. So the first argument in the callback function, the message, is actually the second argument of this emit function. So for the message, I will send hello world. And the third argument is going to be the second argument in the callback. So I will send a status of 200. In this code, we've created a new instance of the event emitter object, and we wired up a listener to listen for custom events, and now we are going to emit a custom event. Let's go ahead and save this and go over to the terminal, and let's run our file, node Ben Franklin. And we can see here that this works successfully, giving us a status of 200 and a message of hello world returned in the terminal. The event emitter is rarely used as a standalone object. We can really get mileage out of it by allowing our objects to inherit the event emitter. Let's change our code so that we have a person object that inherits the event emitter. Let's go back to our code in Sublime. And the first thing that I wanna do is instead of including just the events up here on line one, we can actually pull the event emitter out of events directly in this require statement here. So I will use event emitter as a variable, and then I can just chain on to the end of this require statement, event emitter. And that will pull that constructor function out of the events module and set this variable to our new constructor function. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're not gonna just create an instance of the emitter. So I'm actually gonna delete all of this code. What I would like to do is create an object, and that object is going to be a person. Now in JavaScript, objects are functions, so we will create a constructor function here for this object. And in this constructor function, we're gonna take in the person's name. And in this object, this person's name will be set to the name value that is passed to this constructor function. So we're gonna create an instance of a person. This instance of a person is gonna be an object that has a name property. All right, so what we want is our person object to inherit the event emitter. We can actually use the utilities module to help us do this. So up here on line two, I'm gonna create a var called util, and I'm gonna require 
our utilities module. The utilities module has an inherits function, and it's a way that we can add a object to the prototype of an existing object. That's how JavaScript handles inheritance. So what I'm going to do is add util dot inherits here on line eight. And we want our person object to inherit our event emitter. So this one line here has just added the event emitter to the person's prototype, which means that the person object inherits all of the functionality from the event emitter. If I create a new instance of a person, it will have an on and emit function. So let's create an instance of Ben Franklin or Ben with this new person object. So here on line 10, I'm going to add a variable for Ben. That will be the new person that we're going to create an instance of. I'm going to invoke my person function with a new keyword because it is a constructor. And when we invoke this new person function, we're going to send it a name. So there we have created a new instance of a person. And the name of this new instance is Ben Franklin. So because this person inherits the event emitter, Ben can listen for custom events. So we could listen for, let's say, when Ben speaks. So if a speak event is raised, this callback function will be used to handle it. And whatever Ben just said will be passed to this function. So I'll go ahead and add that there. So this callback function will take in said as the argument when the speak event raises. So we'll go ahead and just log what Ben is saying. And I'm going to use a template string to do that. So let's use those back tick characters. And what we're going to do is use a dollar sign and a couple of curly brackets to display this or this current person, Ben's name. So we can use the this keyword because this callback function knows that this is the current instance of your object. This is equal to Ben. And then we'll go ahead and also log what they said. All right. So Ben also has an emit function, which means that this instance of Ben can emit a speak event. You may delay, but time will not. There we go. So whenever Ben emits a speak event, any listeners that listen for the speak event, like the one we've wired up on line 12, will fire their custom callbacks. In this case, we are passing you may delay, but time will not to that callback function as the said variable. And when this happens, we're going to log the name of the person, and we're also going to log what they just said with the recent speak event. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go back to our terminal and let's run our application again. We will node Ben Franklin. And we can see that Ben says, you may delay, but time will not. The event emitter provides us a way to create custom objects that raise custom events that can be handled asynchronously. And because these events are handled asynchronously, it is a very important tool in Node.js.